kind introduction and then reading that CV, I'll just make it short to just go on rather than long. And thank you for inviting me. Right, um, as always, I've got too many slides, so I need to, to motor through this, but we should have some chance for some questions. Um, Linked data exposing what we have. Um, sounds like a bit of a daring statement on a couple of levels, but we'll see. Uh, let's start off with something warm and comforting. Um, some nice wooden drawers that we know we've got lots of bits of card in. Uh, I, I saw this described as librarian porn the other day. <laughs> and that was another Englishman, so uh, yeah, we're a funny lot over there. Anyway, it gives me a background to ask a question. Yeah. Why do libraries catalogue? It seems a bit of a silly question. Um, a few years ago, I could have pointed you to uh, some people in the library sector who I think they thought the reason for cataloguing was to lovingly craft and art records, full stop. Um, I don't think there's many of those left in our, our sector. Um, the simple answer is so folks can find our stuff. Um, we need to lead people to resources. The um, problem is, where are our users? Um, they're not where they used to be traditionally. They're kind of uh, not there or there, or very often there. They tend not to be browsing the, the stats. Um, even in an academic environment, we're hearing reports that more users are entering the library, but they tend to be in the cafeteria or the social working areas, not browsing the stats quite so much. They're very often in the outside world on their PCs, beavering away. Or increasingly, in, in a bedroom at 2 o'clock in the morning, um, which apparently is one of the major peak hit rates on library search interfaces, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I wonder why. Talking of interfaces, uh, are our users in these interfaces? Are they in the traditional library search interfaces? I think increasingly they're not. They're here. They're in a general purpose search engine. Um, to a certain extent, it's not just there on a laptop or a PC. They're there on a device like this. And um, if you've got an iPad or, a, or another tablet, do you know how to make it search anywhere else other than Google? Not many people do. Um, you open it up, there's a search prompt, you type your search in there, you end up uh, where, where this device takes you. Um, our users are very often in on devices like this. Um, very useful for information, uh, Wikipedia, but most people tend to get to Wikipedia by going to Google and typing Wikipedia into a search prompt. This is not how we normally expect our users to come to our resources. This is a slide by Roman Werens from the uh, Bibliothèque Nationale de France. They've got a link data catalogue interface which they launched about two years, 18 months ago. And they were analysing the, the search traffic to their site, where it came from. And in this particular point, they were looking at the detail page. Go to a search prompt, type a term in, get a list of results, click on one, the detail page. Over 80% of the hits on the detail page were coming from external search engines. Which kind of means that they could turn off the search prompt at the National Library of France and only disenfranchise 20% of their users. Which is interesting. <coughs> Here's another warm, comforting picture. This is British law on rolls of vellum in the Palace of Westminster, complete with uh, cataloguing tags on the end of the rolls so that the person that looks after them can find them. Libraries, archives, and museums, up until two or three decades ago, had the monopoly on where you went to find information. You went to the library at the um, Not anymore. There are many sources of information that people go to very often instead of the library as well as the government sites, YouTube, Wikipedia, the media, social networking, etc. Our users are choosing to go to those sources for information very often because their devices are taking them in that direction. And these areas are looking at improving the way they deliver information. Even, even Google are providing information, not just lists of search results, information on the edge of their page. They're delivering facts to our users. So it's not a set of 
strings they found on various pages that are telling, them, telling me that uh, Albert Einstein died in Princeton. It's a fact, and if you link on it, it will take you through, through to some facts about Princeton and so on. They call this the knowledge graph. It's based on linked data under, under the hood. If you want to find out a little bit more about that, uh, type in things, not strings, into your favourite search engine. And a very interesting blog post comes up from Google. So what we're seeing is um, our users are in Google almost because the technology is leading them. They're not in Google Scholar or Google, Google Book Search. Very often in, in our world, we say, oh yeah, go search Google Scholar. Our users have just as little idea where to find Google Scholar as they do the library search interface. Our users are in Google. Uh, other search engines are available. The problem is, our data is not in Google. Why is our data not in Google? It's because Google does not understand MAR, ISPD, OMIP, HRDI, etc. Put your favourite standard in there. <laughs> it's, they have the processing power to be able to understand this, but they're more focused on handling broad information in the wider world. So we're against this landscape. How do we get the information to where our users are? And that was a question that OCRC addressed when we decided to put link data into WorldCat. 300 million resources in WorldCat now links to 2 billion holdings within WorldCat. And we wanted to make sure that that information could work on behalf of the libraries that contributed that data to get people to their resources. So we decided to embed link data. We used a vocabulary called Schema Novel, which I'll come back to later on. We used technology of the web, something called RDFA, to embed data into the web page so the search engines could um, understand it. We provided link data um, links to authoritative sources. So we provided links to GUI, Library of Congress, Subject Tabbings and Name Authorities, DOI, VAF, FAST. And we already heard from Philip earlier on how important something like VAF is to act as a, an entry point into authoritative data in the web, which is in the link data pool. Uh, we made it open data, there's not a lot of point in publishing this data if people can't use it. And we launched it as an experiment this time last year. Now this is an experiment not in the, we'll get bored in a year and do something else. This is an experiment as it's evolving, the world's evolving, the vocabularies are evolving, the algorithms to define the data in these environments are evolving. So it's something that's on together. If you go and look at WorldCat, go from search results, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and press the link data tab. It will open and you'll see this. I think you can agree it should be closed to the normal use. This, this, what you're looking at there is not designed for a human to be reading. It's there for people who understand the data, and it's, help, it's there to help me do a presentation. <laughs> but what that's saying is, we have an identifier for the book that this page is about. Further down, we're, we're asserting that this thing is a book. So anybody can come to this URI to get this information. They don't have to be, be even aware about looking at library data. So we have to kind of tell them what the thing is. If they're not sure what a book is, they can follow the link and it will take them to the vocabulary site which will describe the attributes of this type. A little bit further down, we can identify that this book is about, and there's a link into Dewey. So we're looking at the Dewey data. Now, I'm a human, so it's popped up a web page. There's data behind the scenes here, so a machine can capture that data. And one more about here, we're, we're linking out to the Library of Congress subject headings. That's demonstrated the linking of sets of data. I've visited four websites there. The data is distributed across the web. In, 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 authoritative environments to bring the data together. So what's the effect of this? Oh, sorry, one more slide before I move on and say that. There's an update that's happened this year. If there's, if there's any uh, technical geeks in the audience, we've added something called content negotiation. The systems that consume this data want it, want it in different formats. So if I wanted it to add a bit of value to the web page, I'd probably want it in, in a JSON format, which is put together with HTML, or I might want XML, etc. So this is the standard way the rest of the web exports data in different formats, and that went live uh, 
early this month. So, as I was about to say, what's the effect? Well, World Cat is large, but it's only one site on the web. So, no matter how loud we shout, we're not going to overcome the information published by large organisations for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, for instance. We're not going to make much difference at that level on our own. But what we are seeing is some of the more technical, more obscure books, more uh, educational books, they are starting to appear in the main Google search index, like this one. When you click on it, it comes straight into World Cat for the page. So, that has brought that page one decision and one click closer to the user. They haven't had to decide to go search somewhere else. They haven't had to decide to go into Google Scholar. And when they found it, they haven't had to look for a link that said find in the library. It's taken them right through to the data where there's holdings information on the bottom. That's, that's a small step forward. It's not taking full advantage of the data yet, but the effect is already happening. I mentioned schema.org which is the vocabulary we're using for this. We're not using the library vocabulary. Why? Because Schema.org is a successful vocabulary used across the web. One of the reasons it's successful is that these four small, insignificant, you might have heard of organisations are behind it. Google, Bing, Yahoo and Yandex, the Russian search engine, cooperated. I'll let that sentence hang in for a moment. It's not the kind of sentence you expect to hear with those names in it. But they cooperated to come together to define a vocabulary for describing stuff. And I don't think the term should be any more accurate than that. Stuff on the web. Concepts, things, uh, concepts, fridges, you name it, describe it with this language. It's such a success that within its first year from being launched, Google and Bing both agreed that they were getting something like 7 to 10 percent of the pages they harvest on a daily basis containing that vocabulary. That's a lot of web pages in anybody's inquiry. So, trying to use library data to get it under the noses of the people as broadly as possible, use the vocabulary of that environment. So, we use Schema.org, and immediately I then get asked, is Schema.org good enough for library data exchange? Could this replace Mark? No, most definitely not. It's not designed for that depth of information. It's designed to provide a broad description of our resources so the rest of the world that we know has got So, is it good enough for that task in the library world? Um, almost. Considering there was no library people involved in that, in, in the development of this, um, they didn't do too bad a job. Luckily, they work in an open environment under the W3C, so I formed another W3C group uh, amongst organisations interested in bibliographic data to recommend some extensions to student level, and only a few, to extend its capability in the bibliographic world. But that's not the only uh, link data initiative in the bibliographic world. We've already heard Pitfrag mentioned from the Library of Congress. Uh, an initiative around the foundation for the future of bibliographic description that happens on, in and as part of the web and the network world we live in. You might think there's a conflict on site. Schema.org, keep search engines happen. Uh, big frame, detailed, library-specific vocabularies for the bibliographic world. They're actually complementary. As I was kind of saying earlier on, Google and, and their fellows are not going to drill into a rich bibliographic language to get information. They want something lightweight, like Schema Double. But Schema Double would be too lightweight to run the library. We need to do both. And the nice thing in the, in the link data world is when somebody asks you for information, you can reply in as many vocabulary as you, as you like at the same time. So I'm predicting in the future, libraries will output two sets of information, same, different vocabulary, same, same information, and it would be up to the consumer to decide which bits of that information they use. We're not predicting how they're going to use it, we just have put the information for them to do. So moving into that world, we do have one or two challenges in the environment, not least in the library world, we catalogue at the, at the manifestation level. We describe the book in our hand. The rest of the world searches for works. You tend not to get somebody go to Google and type in something along the line of the third imprint of the second edition of the hardback. They look for war and peace. 
and expect to say, oh, I've got the movie, I've got the book, I've got the Russian edition, do you want a paperback, do you want an audio? That kind of thing. So we need to work on the data that we've got to identify the differences here. The other thing is, in the library world, we're absolutely brilliant at creating silos. Is it an e-resource? Is it digital? Is it the book? Because it affects where you're supposed to look for it. This needs to be all brought together and aggregated uh, in an environment such as WorldCamp. What does this mean for what's happening behind the scene? We're, we're moving from a world of cataloging, logging textual information on an electronic version of a piece of card into providing links between authoritative descriptions for concepts and people and um, publishers and things like that. So the cataloging spotlight, if you like, is moving traditionally away from the manifestation and using very lightly specific vocabularies like that. And it's moving more towards a work level. Using linked data to connect things together. Uh, and the key element in the middle here is the authorities. We're linking authoritative information, be it local or global, about institutions, subjects, names, locations, publishers, events, etc. Together to describe those works. Manifestations will be important. Works will lead people towards your manifestations. And schema.org would be a general vocabulary. So the objective is to become visible on the web of data. We need to light our way to our resources. Not necessarily a description in WorldCat, even though that's important, but to the resources in your library. We need to register your resources in the network so the Googles of this world know that they're there. They are very good at providing a link to the local instance of something you're looking for. Search for pizza, search for taxi, you get the place down the road. You don't get the one the other side of the Atlantic. They don't know you've got these resources in your local library. So they tend to direct people to so national library perhaps or world cup or something. We need to build this web of data. We, we're building the web of data linking to all resources that are in all libraries in effect. And bringing it back down round to the group that I'm talking to here, um, a holding is a link between a library and the resource. And we need to describe those resources, describe those libraries in um, structured ways with identifiers so that we can describe and the search engines can infer the connections between them. Which means you've got that book, which in our terms is identified and hold it. Is this going to happen in our end? Well, it's going to take years, not decades, which in our world is kind of hope. We tend to take decades to bring them into. But if we don't do something about it, the web will progress without us. We see it happen. So we need to be part of this. Uh, it gives us an opportunity that we together, as the library community, can reach for. And that opportunity <coughs> is to reassert our position on the informational landscape. We'll never get the monopoly back. But at the moment, we're almost in it. We're off the playing field as far as the general world is concerned. We, as a community, need to reassert our place on that landscape as being authoritative, reliable, trusted deliverers of resource information for all materials, not just books. And kind of, that's all I wanted to say.